Nestled in some of the world's most volatile regions, the U.S. Army's most dangerous military bases are bastions of strength and resilience. Uh, obviously, if we stay behind these walls, we won't truly understand the severity of what's going on. These bases operate under constant threats from enemy attacks to nature's unpredictability. Within their perimeters, soldiers and personnel face unique challenges, adapting to environments where vigilance is as crucial as the air they breathe. Are you ready to uncover the hidden realities and untold stories of some of the world's most dangerous military bases? Do you dare to delve into the high-risk, high-tension environments where U.S. soldiers bravely serve daily? Join us in exploring the riveting world of these extraordinary outposts in life inside us Army's most dangerous military bases. Marine Corps Air Station Futenma, located in Jinawan, Okinawa, is more than just a military installation. It symbolizes historical shifts, geopolitical tensions, and the challenges of coexistence between a military presence and civilian life. Established in the aftermath of World War II, this base has been a cornerstone of U.S. military operations in the Asia-Pacific region. At the end of the Battle of Okinawa in 1945, the U.S. military constructed Futenma Airfield. Initially allocated for 8th Air Force use with B-29 Superfortress strategic bombers, the war's end shifted its role to a support airfield for nearby Kadena Air Base. Over the years, Futenma evolved, coming under the jurisdiction of the United States Navy in 1957 and eventually transforming into the crucial Marine Corps air station it is today. The base is a bustling hub, home to approximately 3,000 Marines of the 1st Marine Aircraft Wing and other units. It plays a critical role in training pilots and air crews, providing air support to land and sea-based Marines in Okinawa, and maintaining readiness for operations throughout the Asia-Pacific. The base's facilities are extensive, with a long runway capable of handling a variety of aircraft, from fighter jets to transport helicopters. This capability positions MCS Futenma as not just a military asset, but also a crucial player in humanitarian assistance and disaster relief operations particularly given its elevation, which offers a safe location in the event of tsunamis and other natural disasters. However, the base's strategic importance comes with significant challenges. Situated in Jinawan City, with a population of over 90,000, MCAS Futenma is surrounded by residential areas, schools, and businesses. This proximity to a densely populated urban area poses unique risks. The roar of aircraft is a constant presence, intertwining with the daily rhythms of the city. The noise pollution and the risk of accidents are significant concerns for the base personnel and the local population. The base's location has been likened to having fighter jets landing in a central metropolitan park, highlighting the unusual and potentially hazardous nature of its urban setting. In August 2004, these risks were starkly highlighted when a Marine Corps CH-53D transport helicopter crashed on the campus of Okinawa International University. Fortunately, there were no injuries on the ground but the incident underscored the ever-present danger of operating such a facility in a populated area. Another incident, such as the 2017 event where a window from a U.S. military helicopter fell onto a school playground, has amplified concerns about the dangers posed by the base's operations. Safety concerns are not limited to air accidents. Pollution and potential soil contamination have also been raised. Reports of leaking barrels containing Agent Orange were unearthed in the 1980s, though contested by the U.S. Department of Defense, have added to the apprehensions of the local community. The tension between the base's operational needs and Genoan's residents' well-being has been a persistent theme. The base has been a focal point of various political controversies, reflecting the complex relationship between Japan, the United States, and the local Okinawan community. Plans to move the base within or off the island have been mired in political and logistical challenges, mirroring the broader issues of U.S. military presence on Okinawa. The air station is an anomaly in terms of military installations. It sits uncomfortably close to schools, hospitals, and residential areas, a situation that is highly unusual for a facility that handles a variety of military aircraft, including CH-53 helicopters and V-22 Osprey tilt rotor aircraft. The base's proximity to civilian areas has not only raised safety concerns, but it has also become a symbol of the ongoing tension between the strategic needs of the U.S. military and the rights and welfare of the local Okinawan population. 
This sentiment is rooted in a history where Okinawa has often been at the crossroads of major geopolitical shifts. Following Japan's annexation of the Ryukyu Kingdom in the 19th century, Okinawa has repeatedly been a strategic focal point, most notably during World War II. Post-war, the U.S. military presence, cemented by the San Francisco Treaty, has been a constant in Okinawan life. This concentration has led to various social issues, including noise pollution, environmental concerns, and tensions related to crimes and accidents involving U.S. service members. The proposed relocation of Emskas Futenma to the Hinoko area of Nago City, part of the 1996 agreement between Japan and the U.S., was meant to alleviate some of these issues. However, the relocation plan has been met with staunch opposition. Environmental concerns, particularly about the impact on the fragile marine ecosystems of Ura Bay and the sentiment against increasing the military footprint in Okinawa, have led to protracted delays and political stalemate. In the meantime, life at MCS Futenma continues amidst this backdrop of uncertainty and controversy. The base, with a contingent of approximately 3,000 Marines, remains an active and vital component of U.S. military operations in the region. As negotiations over its future proceed, Emskias Futenma stands as a reminder of the complex interplay between military strategic interests and the socio-political dynamics of their host communities. The resolution of its status will require a nuanced approach that acknowledges the historical context of U.S.-Japan relations, respects the unique cultural and environmental aspects of Okinawa, and addresses the strategic imperatives of the region. What challenges do U.S. forces face at the isolated Altanf military outpost in war-torn Syria, surrounded by a volatile mix of conflicts and hostile forces? Altanf, a remote U.S. military base in southeastern Syria, has been a pivotal yet contentious element in the complex tapestry of the Syrian conflict and broader geopolitical struggles in the Middle East. Established in a strategically significant location near the junction of the Syrian, Iraqi, and Jordanian borders, Altanf serves as a critical outpost in the American-led intervention against the Islamic State IS, and as a counterbalance to Iranian influence in the region. Altanf is situated in the Homs Governorate, approximately 24 kilometers west of the Al-Walid border crossing in the Syrian desert. This places it along the vital M2 Baghdad-Damascus Highway, a key regional trade and military movement route. The base's strategic position is further underscored by its proximity to the Rukban refugee camp, which lies within the surrounding deconfliction zone and has been home to thousands of internally displaced Syrians. The U.S. military presence in Altanf began to solidify in early 2016 during the height of the American-led intervention in the Syrian Civil War. The primary aim was to train anti-IS fighters, notably the new Syrian army, which later re-emerged as the Revolutionary Commando Army, Magawir al thawra in December 2016. This group, composed primarily of Syrian rebels, has been central to U.S. efforts to combat IS and maintain a foothold in this strategic region. The garrison at Altanf has been crucial for U.S. and coalition forces in disrupting IS operations and blocking the expansion of Iran-backed militias in Syria. The base also serves as the headquarters for the Revolutionary Commando Army, providing them with essential training and support. U.S. troops numbering at least 200 as of 2023 play a pivotal role in coordinating operations against IS and other extremist groups within the region. In addition to its anti-IS operations, Al-Tanf has been a symbol of U.S. efforts to counter the residual influence of the Russia-Syria-Iran coalition in the area. The base's presence has been justified by the U.S. under the doctrine of collective self-defense, citing the necessity to defend Iraq, the U.S., and other states from IS and active terrorist groups. The Syrian government, backed by its allies Iran, Russia, and China, has consistently criticized the American presence in Al-Tanf, labeling it as illegal and an act of aggression. They demand the immediate and unconditional withdrawal of foreign forces from Syrian territory. This stance is part of a broader contention over foreign military presence in Syria, highlighting the complex international dimensions of the Syrian conflict. The legality of the U.S. occupation has been a subject of international debate. In a 2018 letter, the U.S. defended its position by citing collective self-defense. However, several nations, including China, have contested this stance which has called on the United States to respect other countries' sovereignty and territorial integrity. Altanf has witnessed several direct military engagements reflecting the high-stakes nature of its operations, 
Notable incidents include the 2017 attack by IS fighters, which was repelled by U.S. and Allied forces, and subsequent airstrikes that killed the majority of the attacking force. The base has also been involved in confrontations with pro-Syrian government forces, including a 2017 incident where U.S. fighter jets struck a convoy advancing towards the base. Al-Tanf's significance is amplified by its proximity to routes crucial for Iranian logistics and its influence spreading across the Levant. This has made it a target for Iran-backed militias who perceive the base as an obstacle to their regional ambitions. The U.S. presence, therefore, is not only a counter-IS stronghold but also a critical barrier to Iranian efforts to establish a land corridor through Iraq and Syria, to Lebanon, and the Mediterranean. The base has faced various threats, notably from Iranian-backed militias operating in the region. These groups, equipped with sophisticated weaponry, including drones, rockets, mortars, and ballistic missiles, pose a persistent threat to the safety and security of U.S. forces stationed there. The U.S. has fortified the base with advanced air defense systems and regularly conducts drills to maintain high readiness against potential attacks. The use of drones by Iranian-backed militias has been a particular concern. These unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs, have been used in surveillance missions and more alarmingly in attack operations against U.S. forces. The U.S. military has had to adapt to this evolving threat, enhancing its counter-drone capabilities in intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance ISR, activities. The drone attacks, often sophisticated and coordinated, have led to heightened tensions in the region. They have prompted retaliatory strikes from the U.S., targeting militia bases and infrastructure, further escalating the conflict. These skirmishes underscore the precarious balance of power in Syria where multiple international and local forces vie for influence and control. Al-Tanf's role extends beyond military confrontations. It significantly impacts U.S. policy in Syria and the broader Middle East. The base is a tangible symbol of the U.S. commitment to counter Iranian influence and support regional allies, including Israel and Jordan. Its strategic location enables the U.S. to project power and influence in a region where Russia and Iran have increasingly asserted their presence. The base's operations have also had repercussions for U.S.-Russia relations, particularly concerning the deconfliction mechanisms in place to prevent confrontations between the two powers in Syria. The dynamics around Al-Tanf indicate the broader struggle for influence in Syria, where external powers are often pitted against each other in a complex and multi-layered conflict. Can you imagine the high-stakes environment at Air Base 201 in Niger, where the shadow of terrorism looms large over every operation? Air Base 201, near Agadez in Niger, stands as a strategic asset in the United States' efforts to combat terrorism in the Sahel region of Africa. This base, also known as Nigerian Air Base 201, represents a significant investment by the U.S. in countering extremist groups, particularly those linked to Al-Qaeda and ISIS, which have a strong presence in the region. The base is approximately 5 kilometers southeast of Agadez, a crucial location due to its proximity to the Sahara Desert and the Sahel region, known for its vast, ungoverned spaces. These areas have become hotbeds for terrorist activities, making Air Base 201 a pivotal location for surveillance and counterterrorism operations. The Nigerian military owns the base, but it was built and financed by the United States, indicating the level of strategic partnership between the two countries. The primary function of Air Base 201 is as a drone base operated by the U.S. military. The base's establishment began in earnest in 2016, intending to enhance the United States' capability to conduct surveillance and, if necessary, strikes against terrorist groups operating in the region. The runway at the base is large enough to accommodate MQ-9 Reaper-armed drones and the Boeing C-17 Globemaster III transport airplanes underlining the significant operational capacity of the base. The operational focus of Air Base 201 is primarily on intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance ISR, missions. These missions are crucial in providing the U.S. and its allies with vital information about the movements and activities of terrorist groups in the Sahel region. The ISR flights officially began in November 2019, marking a significant step in the operational capability of the base. The Sahel region, encompassing parts of Niger, Mali, Burkina Faso, and other neighboring countries, has seen a significant rise in terrorist activities in recent years. 
Groups linked to Al-Qaeda and ISIS have exploited the vast and poorly governed spaces in the region to establish bases, train fighters, and launch attacks. The instability in the surrounding area makes Air Base 201 a high-risk but essential location for military personnel. Air Base 201's role in combating terrorism in the Sahel is part of a broader strategy by the United States and its allies to stabilize the region and counter the spread of extremist ideologies. The presence of the base in Niger signifies the increasing importance of the Sahel region in global counterterrorism efforts. It highlights the challenges of conducting military operations in complex and volatile environments. As Air Base 201 continues to develop its operational capabilities, it remains a critical asset in the ongoing fight against terrorism in the Sahel, demonstrating the United States' commitment to security and stability in the region. Air Base 201's proximity to Agadez, a city just minutes away, has raised significant security and social concerns among the local population. At the same time, a critical asset in counterterrorism, residents and local leaders view the base with apprehension. The fear that the base and its vicinity could become targets for Islamist extremists is a predominant concern, especially following the deadly ambush in Tongo Tongo and other militant activities in the region. The dust and noise from construction have affected daily life in Agadez, but the primary worry is the potential threat of extremist attacks. This fear is rooted in past incidents targeting the region, including coordinated attacks in 2013 against a Nigerian military base in Agadez and a French-operated uranium mine in Arlette. These incidents underscore the vulnerability of the area to extremist violence. The presence of the U.S. base has impacted the economic and social landscape of Agadez. The enforcement of strict anti-migrant laws has affected local smuggling businesses, a critical economic activity in the region. Additionally, the reduction in employment opportunities due to layoffs in uranium and gold mines has exacerbated local unemployment, potentially increasing the susceptibility of the youth to extremist influence. Community leaders like Anastafidan El Suleiman Mohammed express concerns that the base could exacerbate local grievances, potentially aiding extremist recruitment efforts. The perception of the U.S. military as occupiers, combined with economic hardships, creates a complex environment where the base's presence might inadvertently contribute to instability. While the U.S. military views Air Base 201 as a vital platform for ISR missions and counterterrorism efforts, the local perception in Agadez is mixed. Some residents see the base as a symbol of foreign intervention with unclear objectives, while others hope it will enhance security against terrorist threats. The U.S. military's efforts in community engagement, such as restoring schools and equipping hospitals, aim to mitigate these concerns and improve the base's perception. Air Base 201 in Agadez remains a strategically important installation for U.S. operations in the Sahel region, but it operates within a complex social and security landscape. Balancing the base's strategic objectives with local concerns and perceptions is crucial for its long-term success and effectiveness in contributing to regional stability and countering extremist threats. While primarily focused on counterterrorism, the U.S. military's presence in Agadez must also navigate the socioeconomic dynamics and local apprehensions to maintain a sustainable and positive role in the region. How do U.S. troops cope with the constant threat of Iranian-backed attacks at Al-Assad Air Base, a pivotal but perilous location in Iraq? Al-Assad Air Base, located in the Al-Anbar Governorate of Western Iraq, is a significant military base that has played a crucial role in U.S. military operations, especially during Operation Iraqi Freedom. The base, known initially as Qadisiyah Air Base, has a rich history and strategic importance. Al-Assad Air Base, situated about 100 miles west of Baghdad and near the village of Khan al-Baghdadi, occupies a strategic position in the predominantly Sunni Al-Anbar Governorate. The base is divided by Wadi Al-Assadi with an oasis called Abraham's Well nearby. This location places it in a crucial spot for military operations in western Iraq. The base was constructed between 1981 and 1987 by a consortium of Yugoslavian companies as part of Iraq's Super Base project. It included state-of-the-art hardened aircraft shelters known as Yugos, considered advanced at the time. The base was designed to accommodate 5,000 personnel with military and public facilities. Before the 2003 U.S.-led invasion of Iraq, 
Al-Assad Air Base housed Iraqi Air Force units operating MiG-25S and MiG-21S. It was captured by U.S. forces in 2003 and subsequently became the second largest U.S. military airbase in Iraq. Over the years, it has hosted various U.S. military units and has been a significant regional convoy hub. The U.S. military's presence at Al-Assad Air Base has included various divisions and brigades, such as the 2nd Marine Expeditionary Force, the 82nd Airborne Division, and other significant units. The base has served multiple roles, from a logistics hub to a site for counterterrorism operations. It has been equipped with amenities like an indoor swimming pool, movie theater, and fast food outlets, reflecting its importance as a central U.S. military installation. The airbase has hosted visits by high-profile U.S. leaders, including President Donald Trump and First Lady Melania Trump in December 2018, and Vice President Mike Pence in November 2019. These visits underscore the base's significance in U.S. military and political strategies in the region. Al-Assad Air Base, a cornerstone of U.S. military operations in Iraq, has faced significant challenges and attacks, particularly from Iranian-backed militants. These incidents highlight the complex security environment in which U.S. forces operate and the ongoing geopolitical tensions in the region. The strategic importance of Al-Assad Air Base has made it a target for various militant groups, especially those with ties to Iran. The airbase's location in the Sunni-dominated Al-Anbar Governorate places it in an area with a complex political and sectarian landscape. This complexity is further exacerbated by the proximity of insurgent groups and the porous nature of the Iraq-Syria border, which has facilitated the movement of militants and weapons. Ballistic missile attack in January 2020. One of the most significant attacks on Al-Assad Air Base occurred on January 8, 2020, when Iranian ballistic missiles struck it. This attack was in retaliation for the U.S. drone strike that killed Iranian Quds Force Commander Qasem Soleimani. The rockets caused substantial damage to the base's infrastructure and resulted in traumatic brain injuries to several U.S. service members. This event marked a significant escalation in U.S.-Iranian tensions and highlighted the risks faced by U.S. personnel in Iraq. Repeated rocket and drone attacks. Al-Assad Air Base has been subjected to numerous rocket and drone attacks over the years. These attacks, often employing Katyusha rockets or improvised explosive devices attached to drones, have aimed to disrupt operations and cause casualties among U.S. and coalition forces. While many of these attacks have been successfully repelled or resulted in minimal damage, they underscore the persistent threat to the base. Insurgent Infiltration and Tactics The base's vast size and remote location have posed challenges in securing its perimeter against insurgent groups' infiltration. The insurgents have employed various tactics, including the use of hit-and-run attacks and planting improvised explosive devices, IEDs, in the vicinity of the base. In response to these threats, U.S. forces have implemented several measures to enhance the security of Al-Assad Air Base. These include upgrading air defense systems. Following the ballistic missile attack, the U.S. military deployed Patriot air defense systems to the base to counter future missile and drone threats. Strengthening intelligence and surveillance Increased ISR, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance capabilities have been critical in detecting and thwarting planned attacks against the base. Enhanced perimeter security. Improvements in physical security measures, including barriers, watchtowers, and increased patrolling have been implemented to safeguard against infiltrations and indirect fire. The attacks on Al-Assad Air Base have had implications for U.S.-Iraq relations. The Iraqi government caught between its alliances with both the U.S. and Iran has faced internal pressure to reduce foreign military presence in the country. The attacks have fueled debates within Iraq about the future of U.S. forces in the country and the broader region's stability. The tensions at Al-Assad Air Base reflect broader regional conflicts, particularly the rivalry between the U.S. and Iran. The base has become a symbol of U.S. military might in the region, and as such it remains a focal point in the geopolitical power struggle in the Middle East. The continuing presence of U.S. forces at Al-Assad and their engagement with Iranian-backed groups have significant implications for regional security and the future of U.S. involvement in the Middle East. What is life like on Kwajalein Atoll, where strategic importance and remote location blend to create a unique yet potentially vulnerable U.S. military base? Kwajalein Atoll, a key site within the Republic of the Marshall Islands, plays a pivotal role in the U.S. military's ballistic missile and missile interceptor testing programs. Situated in the Ralic chain, the atoll is about 2,100 nautical miles southwest of Honolulu, Hawaii, 
and is the chain's southernmost and most significant island. The atoll, particularly Kwajalein Island, is strategically important due to its unique location in a remote area of the Pacific Ocean. Initially occupied by U.S. forces during World War II, Kwajalein has evolved into a critical site for the U.S. Navy and later the U.S. Army. The transformation began with its use as a naval base and later as a center for missile tests, an evolution marked by historical events such as Operation Crossroads nuclear tests in 1946. The atoll has been integral to U.S. defense efforts, particularly during the Cold War, and has continued to serve as an essential location for missile defense testing. It now forms part of the Ronald Reagan Ballistic Missile Defense Test Site, equipped with sophisticated radars, tracking cameras, missile launchers, and support systems across multiple islands. Kwajalein also plays a significant role in space operations, hosting ground stations for controlling the Global Positioning System (GPS) and serving as a base for orbital rocket launches. The atoll's involvement in advanced technological military and space endeavors underscores its strategic value to the United States. This value is in defense capabilities and the broader context of space exploration and satellite operations. However, the base's remote location presents unique logistical challenges. The isolated nature of the atoll means that supplies and personnel must be transported over long distances, often across the Pacific Ocean. This isolation can pose risks in emergencies or natural disasters, where immediate support or evacuation may be challenging to coordinate. The atoll's small size and limited infrastructure add to these logistical complexities, requiring careful planning and resource management to maintain operations. Moreover, Kwajalein's strategic importance makes it a potential target for adversarial actions. In an era of increasing global tensions and advanced missile technology, the base's role in missile testing and defense could attract attention from potential adversaries. This necessitates robust security measures and constant vigilance to protect the personnel and assets on the atoll. Despite these challenges, Kwajalein Atoll remains a crucial asset for the United States military. Its unique location and capabilities make it an invaluable part of the U.S. defense infrastructure, particularly in missile defense and space operations. The ongoing operations at Kwajalein demonstrate the United States' commitment to maintaining a strong presence in the Pacific region, and ensuring the readiness and effectiveness of its missile defense systems. One of the critical aspects of Kwajalein Atoll is its use in the operation and control of the Global Positioning System (GPS). The atoll is home to one of the five ground stations essential for the functioning of this system. GPS, a satellite-based navigation system, plays a crucial role in military operations and civilian applications worldwide. Such a critical component of the GPS network at Kwajalein underscores the atoll's strategic importance in both the military and civilian spheres. Additionally, Kwajalein serves as a launch base for orbital rockets, further highlighting its role in space-related activities. The atoll's location makes it an ideal site for launching and tracking rockets, contributing significantly to the United States' capabilities in space exploration and satellite deployment. However, the strategic importance of Kwajalein Atoll comes with its own set of challenges and potential risks. Its remote location in the Pacific Ocean, while advantageous for missile testing and space launches, also leads to isolation. The logistical hurdles of maintaining a base in such a remote location require significant resources and planning. Furthermore, the strategic value of Kwajalein also makes it a potential target for adversarial actions. In an increasingly uncertain global security environment, the defense installations and systems at Kwajalein could be seen as strategic targets by potential adversaries. This necessitates robust and continuous security measures to safeguard the personnel and infrastructure on the atoll. Despite these challenges, the United States continues to invest in and utilize Kwajalein Atoll for its strategic benefits. The atoll remains crucial in the U.S. military's efforts to enhance its missile defense capabilities and maintain a strategic advantage in space operations. The ongoing activities at Kwajalein Atoll demonstrate the United States' technological prowess and its commitment to national and global security in an era where space and missile capabilities are increasingly integral to defense strategies.